Welcome to another episode of the Reboot Chronicles, a no holds barred forum with global leaders, authors, entrepreneurs, and CEOs about how organizations stay focused on growth and innovation in unprecedented times. I'm your host, Dean DeBias, coming to you live from Revive's North American headquarters in Chicago, and we would like to thank you for joining us from around the globe today. I'd like to welcome Sri Aravembu to the Reboot Chronicles. He's the founder and CEO of Zoho, which has built, not acquired, I might add, a diversified portfolio of over 55 apps that offers companies very simple solutions in a pretty messed up, complicated market of platforms out there. We're going to get into that. Sridhar leads a team of about 15,000 employees that serve over 750,000 customers, 100 million users, and 150 countries. And uh, last year, they delivered over a billion dollars in annual revenue, which is quite impressive. Sridhar, great to see you, by the way. Thanks for coming. Oh, you're welcome. It's great to be at the Zoho Analyst Conference here in uh, McAllen, Texas. Uh, quite an interesting border town. I kind of love this town. I had no idea what it was going to be like. I hadn't been down here since the 80s. But... Um, I just uh, love the way you kind of bring life to these smaller communities, so maybe we can get into that as well. But um, I'm not sure where to start with you, but what, what, it's a huge crowd here today. What, what's, um, what's your big message to this group? So we need to rethink sort of a, our technology business, and we also have to rethink how to create balance in our communities, our societies, particularly you mentioned the communities exactly like McAllen. Exactly. Because we are out of whack in terms of technology production and technology consumption, where automation, all of that is coming, but the consumers don't have income. This is a global problem. It's upside down. Yep. It's upside down, exactly. Yeah. I thought that was a good message. And then um, when you talk about, I mean, Zoho's, um, some people know, I'm, I'm a fan of any private company that A, can get over a billion dollars, B, didn't take a lot of venture money, or any. <laughs> any uh, C, has a great following of customers, and the employees love it. You know, I've worked for companies like that years ago. There was like FedEx in the go-go yeah. days, American Online in the go-go days. Everyone wanted to be there. But now, I don't feel that with a lot of tech companies. So you guys are um, unique. How do, you, how, do you, how do you foster that? When you get over, you know, 5,000 employees, not to mention 15,000, how, how do you keep that going? Yeah. Thank you for saying that first. Absolutely. It's really a culture of humility and a culture of contentment. Ah. Those are the two fundamental virtues. Because if we don't stay humble, I mean, then we become arrogant. Right. Customers, everybody will notice that. Partners, analysts, everybody will notice that. That's the first one. The mm -hmm. second, contentment. You know, because we are in a, an economy now which wants us to become more and consume more and more and more. That's even cool. if the income isn't there. Right. I'm <laughs> guilty. Consumption. Exactly. That's unfortunate. Well, let's, let's jump into society maybe in a bit because I'm, I'm very interested in your, your views on that, mainly because you're making an impact. Some people aren't, but you touched today on, in talking to some of the analysts, on the long game, which we don't really play, especially in this country, in the U.S. and other countries that are represented here today. Some of them do. Uh, India is an example. China was an example, for instance. But, you know, I'm, uh, most people know that, you know, a lot of my Forbes articles are not too positive about the oligopoly, the Magnificent Seven. I don't know who made up that stupid word, but it's, let's just call it the five, you know, the five that are really kind of controlling the stakes. It's being an old tech guy, you and I have uh, been around for a while. It's, there's a side of it that it's sad to see the ol oligopoly state that's happened. It's also good to see that, as American, of course, uh, you know, that we have such a good hold on the market. But you and I are more global people. It's like, that's not the whole point. You know, why is it that it, you know, it just seems that many companies have just, you know, they're, they're, they're just happy with consolidating and, and CEOs yeah. of small companies are happy with, with exiting. So we understand that model. Um, but what's your, it just seems like the second tier, let's just call them the second tier, third, even third tier companies. It's like, hey, we either have to acquire stuff or we have to be acquired. It's like yeah. that mental state. Yep. And I'm like, that's fine. I believe in that. I believe in exits. Done a lot of them. But why does it always have to be with these seven guys? And everybody knows what I'm talking about. So the, to the short answer to that now is what you said. As an American, you are proud of the fact that these are American companies, right? They're bringing. But the issue is this. Even within America, you take Silicon Valley versus Stockton. Mm -hmm. You take like, uh, you know, uh, the smaller, the, the less uh, tech connected states. You take regions like McAllen. There's a lot of people now left behind in this. Yeah, it's like this. And that, yeah, and uh, the inequality is actually increasing. Yeah. 
So, and, and this is happening even within regions. You look at Seattle, for example, there's extreme disparity in income, wealth, all of that has happened. So, we have to ask ourselves, is this, you know, the, like one company controls all of this technology, wherever it's headquartered, it doesn't matter. Call it Switzerland, call it wherever. Does it actually benefit even the locals that much? Some locals, but really, <laughs> I mean, what Sometimes. percentage of the locals? Sometimes. Right. So these are questions to ask. And take McAllen. Like, until we came here, really no tech companies, tech players here in this region doing the kind of things we are attempting to do, training people to do. All yeah, of it. It, was more, it was more manufacturing <coughs> type companies or, exactly. or ag. Exactly. And it's vitally needed because we have to create the income from tech uh, production so that the tech consumption can balance. Yep. And this balance has to happen locally. Not just at the national level, not just the global level, it has to happen more locally. That's the key. Yeah, and, the, and the haves and haves nots, I mean, some people might hear that as we're just talking about society. We're actually talking about companies. Yes. We're talking about they're just not going to make it. And, and you know, the, the second half of the, you know, the, the roaring 20s here, it's, it's getting uglier for, exactly. <laughs> for smaller, you know, c companies that, um, and some of them are even public. Um, so you talked you talked about you know the haves and haves nots, and it's like you know they're they're. I look at two things as a you know as a coach and mentor and, and serial CEO, and it's like, what's your go to market strategy, right? How are you doing that? And and but for, for that, what's your real product roadmap? And 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 can you afford to build a robust product roadmap? So you talked about differentiation or the lack of it, yes. the lack of differentiation. And I was surprised you said there's a lack of differentiation with the small players. I thought you were going to say the big players, but you're like, no, the big players bought up all their differentiation. Google's a great example. They haven't yep. really invented that much. They have bought most of that. And it's fine. It's smart strategy, right? Microsoft, a little both, but a lot of acquisitions as Apple well. has so much homegrown technology, like the Apple Silicon. They acquired a company. You guys are back. more like Apple than anyone yeah. else. They did acquire a semiconductor firm 20 years, 21 years ago. But they have since put a lot of R&D into yeah, it. Yeah, and now with their goggles, they're looking at buying a couple exactly, things. Yeah. We won't date the show. What, so what, how do you approach that? What do you, oh, let's just ask a more personal question. How do you differentiate Zoho? I mean, I love the fact, one of my pet peeves is, as an as a enterprise guy when I was younger, it's like companies want to buy less product or more products from less companies. They actually want to buy less yeah. products too. But, but less companies, streamline it, make it simple. And... As you pointed out, just the opposite's happening. What, yeah. How are you guys trying to impact that? So, How do you reverse that trend, I guess? Yeah, part of it happened because of the free money floating around in Silicon Valley and all these places, right. where so many companies could just throw money at sales and marketing to acquire customers. Often 50%, 60% of revenue, sometimes even uh, bigger. Public companies doing it. Public companies doing that. So, and that, we refuse to play that game. So to some extent, for our customer acquisition, we have to be tactical which opportunities where we can gain customer traction quickly without mm. having to spend so much money. That could be in particular product categories. That could be in particular geographies. Mexico could be a great market. Dubai is a great market. Those are examples of our strategy for that. Yeah, and so let's go to market. And let's then, a good market. Product roadmap, what do you yeah. have? Product roadmap, I mean, we have. Roadmap is like the world is your oyster. You, you just wake up in the middle of the night and go like, we need this, yeah. add it. Yeah, we, we definitely see the vision that major companies and even smaller companies mm -hmm. want much more integrated, contextually integrated. That's a phrase we use a lot. Technology so that everything just works together. It's yep. again like an Apple message. Today, we still have a lot of gaps in, in the whole ecosystem. That's what we are building. And it's a very hard problem. It's not easy to build it. But we are, I would say, humbly I'll submit that if anybody is closer to that real goal, we are about the closest. We still have work to do, but we are doing a lot in that area. That's how we differentiate. Yeah. Asked about it. The second big differentiation is the culture of R&D, the culture of continuous uh, innovation. Yeah. See, a lot of companies start out with one big bang product. When they are small, they have a very you know, passionate team. They, right. they create a product. But over time, as they grow... And then they protect the core rather exactly, than letting it morph. Exactly. Uh, and, and the whole exit culture happens within companies. It's not just companies making exits, people making exits. That's right. And that's a problem because a lot of R&D is very contextual. Both the ones that have been acquired and the ones that were there in the first place. place because yeah. they went in and bought something and said, exactly. you can stop working on that now. Exactly. We have it. <laughs> and how does it impact? You take any serious technology today, yeah. a semiconductor or an email system or a chat system or a video system, any of that, you, it requires a very high context R&D. It's not the number of people. It's the amount of accumulated knowledge they've gained 
Yeah. All of it cannot be documented, cannot be taught formally. In fact, that's a big, big thing that people don't realize. Like yeah. you have all, so much, we call it very contextual, experiential knowledge that you gain doing these. And then most companies proceed to lose those people. Yeah. That's a differentiation. We, we attempt to keep those people. That's a key to I've seen that firsthand in talking to a lot of your people, yeah. both the, you know, your number two and three guy, as well yeah. as yeah. is that contextual, that connected tissue Correct. stay, you, I, I'm guessing your churn's very low very compared low. to the rest of the tech the, world. The, the, the lowest, rest of the tech world's been a mess. The lowest in the industry. Yeah. Wow, I don't know exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so culture's a, a, a great secret there, but, but going back to your differentiation thing, it's like, it is so hard to do that because Salesforce or you know any of the, uh, Crazy seven will just, great, we're yep. going to buy that, which, okay, we need better safe face recognition, license plate recognition. Correct. We got it. You guys stop working on that. But, I mean, you can't even get Google and Apple to get along. I mean, that's where all the apps are being purchased. Those two things don't even work together okay. well. Um, I assume since you're enterprise, you probably are around, I wasn't going to even get into this. I don't want to get too geeky here, but are you on more Android devices than Apple? We are actually both. We have a we have well, I know very you heavy are. investment. I meant, your, uh, I meant your users. Your users, uh, it depends on the geography. Well, yeah, in the US, your, it'll be a lot more iOS. In your SMBs. In India, in yep. India it'll be more Android. Right. Simply, it's, it's, it's GDP indexed. Yep. If your GDP is high, people are using iPhone. If GDP is low, they're using Android. That's ah. just how it, uh, just that. And the war so, begins yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about uh, tokens, and I thought you were going to talk about something else. You, you said token jobs. What is that? Token distribution jobs. That's yeah, what yeah. we call that. Token distribution jobs. So, yeah. you know, we have uh, for a long period, maybe 10, 15 years, people have discussed this phenomenon that they call bullshit jobs. People come out and say, well, sometimes anonymously, sometimes even publicly, you know, if my job doesn't exist, nobody would miss it. I don't need to do what I'm doing. This is a very, you know, That is so true for so, so many true jobs. So many people, right? I ask myself, why does a job company exist? It's not like people are irrational. Yeah. Ultimately, when you run massive deficits, you need a way to consume all the stuff that comes in and you can give it free, but obviously, you know, you have to create some accounting entity and that accounting device is there. You give a consumption token, which is what we call an income, a wage, a paycheck. Right, right. <laughs> and your job is to go consume. Actually, your real, real job is to go consume and you get this token distribution job to enable you to consume. That is what has happened. And I highlighted healthcare and education, a lot of these sectors where it's happening. So that is my, and the token distribution jobs all are heavy software consumers. Uh, <laughs> right? And those of you that weren't there, what he pointed out was the, the percentage of admin jobs as an educator. I mean, I saw this at Northwestern. Yeah. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. But you specifically put up University of Michigan. Michigan yeah. But it's everywhere. It's just not one university. 57,000, 27,000 or something. Like eight techs, the uh, faculty. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the ratio to faculty. admin jobs. So we're not talking about secretaries here. Yeah, exactly. It was off the charts. And it is, I've definitely seen it in healthcare. And I think in major enterprise corporations. Is this happening? Which is Same. where you're going. I think they're finally catching on to that. Right. I think, you know, the, yeah. the pandemic way in the rear view mirror now, um, a lot of CEOs kind of were, their eyes were opened into, I don't really need all these layers, do I? Or like, yeah. no, you didn't, never did. <laughs> McKinsey told you you did, maybe. I don't know. But then why did they build it in the first place? Why? I'm offering this thesis that these were all token distribution jobs. The economy needed them uh, because to consume the stuff that's coming in. It's like the when government. you run, now so when I you create it. an imbalance, whether in the body, on an ecosystem, anywhere, the ecosystem had to adjust somewhere. Yeah. Somebody, someone has to create that income to consume stuff. Yeah. They're not giving it free. So that's that's how it got solved here. That's like the government jumping in. I mean, like, I can see that in some socialist countries, but. Do that. Yeah, America and India, really? This, 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 this looks, token distribution job or AKA bullshit jobs do exist. Everybody knows that. You heard it here first, <laughs> bullshit jobs. <laughs> Love it. Oh, the other thing uh, we were talking about is the um, the consumption of software in this country, in the U.S., is off the charts stupid. And I mean, I'm chairman of a couple of companies, a little smaller than yours, but they're not multi-billion dollar companies. And one day I was talking to the CEO, it's just like, why do you have these 10 different things that you're paying $10 a seat for? And because yeah. the employees were like all on Slack complaining about it. So I'm like, have you read this Slack chain? It's like, you're using 10 different programs. and so he started you know, systematically getting rid of some of them and 
and, and some people didn't like that. Most people were like, you know, hallelujah. And now, yeah. why don't you get rid of Slack, too? <laughs> I'm like, well, no, let's make it better. How can we better. make it better? So what's the solution to that? So we know enterprises want to buy, you know, less products from less companies. But at the same time, us entrepreneurs, we want to create the next More, thing and yeah. the next thing and the next thing. Yeah. So, which is, it's at least called consolidation with M&A. But let's go back to the product roadmap. What, how do you fix that? In any industry, this happens, right? Where there's a period of, like, massive expansion then there's a period of consolidation. Even without bubbles, this happens, like a, a uh, gold rush, yep. all of that. Bubbles make that swings up and down much more violent. That's what they do. That's a housing bubble, whatever. In other words, a natural cycle exists, like in the body, anywhere. But we are making that cycle worse with these financial bubbles. Right. And so that's, we had that up cycle where so many companies got created, so many token distribution jobs existed, so much software was sold, all of it. Right. Now we are in starting the correction phase. That's why it feels painful. This is the no bullshit phase, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we, we talk a lot about uh, AI on the show back almost a half a decade. So before AI was all the rage. So, But we haven't talked a lot about how is it going to change developers and developing. And, you know, there's a crowd that says, oh, my gosh, it's going to take my job. And there's another smart crowd that's saying, I'm so much better at this now because I don't have to stay up in the middle of the night at Cisco's server farm for three days to find out where the telco, <laughs> telling you one of his personal stories. You know, how, why is the telco down and why shouldn't this be fixed? What, how is Zoho going to deploy this more inward facing now? Yeah. Um, AI I think to make both yourselves right. more competitor and kick the, kick the Magnificent Seven around a bit. So both are right in the sense that some people who, you know, the software development is already bifurcating where the, you know, the very, very smart developer to the average developer, that bifurcation is increasing too. These tools are going to make it, I think, worse. And this is true in every worse. sector, worse wow. in many ways. See, this is a fundamental uh, fundamental nature of what is going on right now. And the way that we plan to do, we have said, I've assured our employees, we won't lay off people. So how do we solve that? You know, If people are not yeah. needed to develop a particular piece of software, we are going to deploy them to be closer to the customer, solve the problem. So that's where we are heading. And in fact, all these offices, Mikhail and all that, yeah. is an attempt to get ahead of this, get closer to the customer everywhere. Tomorrow I'm going to Mexico, the same reason. Get yeah. closer to Mexican customers, Dubai, yeah. all of that. I love that. That puts the spotlight on design. More design, UX, what are the customer's yeah. needs, observation. Correct. Because you can code it that quicker. That problem cannot be solved by AI. No. Because it's a very human problem right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> My son's a top designer at a couple of companies and uh, he'll love that statement. Uh, and it's true, but right now it seems like it's the opposite. It's like, right. let's do a little bit of this, and then we need to spend nine months on developing. Right. Like, oh, okay. So you see this trend towards bootstrapping. What's that all about? It's, again, a reaction to what happened, like the excesses of the VC. You know, where, <laughs> you know, you'll spend 100, 200, 300 million, 500 million. Ridiculous. Pump yeah. a lot of money, yeah. and then not much will come out, and then lay off people, all of this. A lot of people get turned off by that. Yeah. People have experienced it as even employers sometimes, Still. employees, and they hate it. And it's happening. It's not just Christmas time firings exactly. anymore. Exactly. And so that's why a lot of people want to feel a better, want to discover a better way. Bootstrapping, see, it keeps us honest. Yeah. Look, Zoho, I always say, we have the freedom to do whatever we want as long as we pay for it. Exactly. <laughs> as long as we pay for it. I bet your employees love yeah. that. <laughs> So how do you get rid of all this chaos, this SaaS chaos that's going on with the, all the big companies? And I mean, you're, one of your solutions is Zoho Suite, put it all into one thing and everybody's got everything there. But even that can get overwhelming. So Correct. It, it, will it ever yeah. get to a no, point? I think it will rationalize quite a bit. We are seeing a surge of demand for our uh, whole suite approach now. I saw We're that. seeing that and we saw the growth numbers put up. 60, so, 60%. I right. Think and more crazy. and more. Customers are using multiple of our products, often yep. full suites. All that is happening. Yep. I also believe that you know, we have to do a lot of integration with the ecosystem. We are doing that too. Like thousands of companies we are now integrating with. So it's not like we say you have to rip everything out and we have to replace this with us. We will come in with you know, whatever problem we wanted to solve, we will solve it. And then slowly you can expand into it if you choose. That's our message. We, yep. we always want to remain humble. And you've got about 2,000 partners, I think. Um, yeah. So the big dogs of you know, systems integrations, you know, global system integration, most of the CEOs have been on the show. And, and uh, 
you know, we give mixed reviews, but there is a very valuable thing about systems integration, especially okay. as you go up market. Right. Um, yeah. What's your what's your strategy there? Because that because that's gone up too as a percentage yeah. of revenue, which Correct. is good. It takes more weight off of you guys. Yeah. Not that your stuff's hard to implement, but for an enterprise, yeah, for an enterprise, they allow very specific requirements that yep. often require the domain experts. I believe that's a lot of jobs will go there. I mentioned even internally, a lot of jobs will go towards vertical solutions, solutions that are taking out base product, but a particular industry that's needs it. That's, that's where, I, and the same thing would happen in SIs. I know you haven't acquired much, uh, which I love the strategy. It's like, you come up with something, just go build it, get the team, move them around. So what about M&A as whatever, even if it's not opportunistic, because the markets go up and down, M&A and IPO and going public and all that nonsense. Yeah. So we, Having done it, I call it the brain damage phase, but... Um, <laughs> the issue is that, I'm sure you would have experienced it, it's very hard to mix cultures together. Very what hard to mix cultures, like you take company A and company B, you merge them together, there's a lot of subtle conflicts that arise, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And who reports to who? And hey, I have more experience than this guy I'm reporting to. Yes. All of this, right? And then, like, one company starts to behave like a conquering army. The so, other company starts especially to Especially a year later. Yeah, it's exactly. Sort of, they're like, yeah, we don't need you anymore. And 80% and, <laughs> and of tech acquisitions fail on these grounds. I think really technology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't deliver the value that was promised on the original premise. And the reason is all these, each one is a tiny problem. But there's like a thousand of them, and you put them all together, they become insurmountable. That's what I believe sinks acquisitions. So we like, you know, gonna we would like to, to do acquisitions. Have but to agree every, with you there. The way yeah. Apple does it, yeah, very small team, focused, yeah. not competing with anybody inside. We empower them, go do this stuff, and serve all of Zoho and all of our customer base. That works. Yep. So that's the model we believe in. Or not acquire them at all. Our, yeah. I have a Dancing with Startups program that helps large companies partner with startups where they don't have to own and control. Well, no. They can own something. Exactly. That's been on the rise too. Yeah. And then what, do you, what, do you, what are you um, agnostic about going public someday? Or uh, it, at least really not. Uh, we, because I look at the current Wall Street culture, the private equity, all of that. It's the brutal. pressures of, it's yeah, it's brutal. brutal. Yeah, it's brutal. <laughs> and, and quarter to quarter what it will make. See, yeah. I've been doing this for 27 years. Yeah. Uh -huh. Most people in my position in public companies retire or leave or, or do something else because they're just tired. Yeah. See what turnover is coming from that. I'm just tired, right? I'm not tired. I want to keep it that way. I love it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, sure. First of all, it's been, it's been great having you on, but 27 years, it's a long time. You've got to have so many personal stories that, uh, Maybe it would help the entrepreneur out there and the struggling CEO <laughs> in the roaring 20s. What um, what were some of your biggest challenges that will take away that we can uh, give the uh, audience? Each, each era of the company had different challenges. In the very beginning, you know, nobody will take you seriously. You're know, a little bootstrapped company. It's nobody the hardest will phase. It's the hardest phase. Oh. We overcame that. So we, what I say is don't, don't try to persuade anyone to come work for you. Create an opportunity for someone who needs it. That's how we solve that phase. And... Today, if you look at the fast forward, how do we handle, navigate this world of massive giants with their massive IP portfolios? How do you navigate that? How do you create unique, differentiated products? Right. That's a challenge. So each phase brings a different challenge, but I always like to remain grounded, rooted. I take care of our employees, our customers, pay attention to technology. I still code. I still spend like 60, 70% of my time no in the software. It's... Yeah, I still do it. I heard that. I was yeah. like, no way. Yeah. And that. Do you stay up late at night like I do? Is that I when do, you I do? I do, I do, I do. Or I wake up early. I wake up like this morning, I woke up at 2 or 3 a.m. Yeah, that's usually what I do writing. Yeah. <laughs> no distraction. That's when, like, no distraction, your brain is working fully. And... So AI is not getting rid of your coding skills yet. <laughs> yeah. You know, I forgot to ask you about enterprise. How do you. To me, that's just massive, double the size of your yeah. company. What, yeah. uh, what's your view on going into that? Uh, we had, it's a bit of a rat's nest, I'll just call it that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you yes. already have. Everyone's competing with you already now right. if yeah. you're going up channel or up market yeah. or whatever. We, we are doing it well. Right now, we have a good number of customers here in this very yeah, So we are, doing it. It. we are doing it well. Yeah. We have to do a lot more of it. But we'd like to do it our own way, not make promises we can't keep. Keep our promises, stay humble, stay grounded. And grow. Growth will take care of itself. That's yeah. what. I love it. Yeah, we are not going anywhere. <laughs> no. 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 Except uh, we're going off to the next talk. Any advice you'd give to uh, people that want to uh, come work for you? Because it is a different culture. Yeah. I always tell people, I actually write, a, I've written a letter to our HR 
distributes it to every person we make an offer to. Oh. Why you shouldn't come work for this company? No way. Yeah. What's it say? It's an anti-pattern. So we oh. say, look, you might have heard these cool things. I say that all those cool things are not true. <laughs> Don't believe in any <laughs> of them. If they're still interested, that's yeah. perfect. <laughs> Why I say it is, many times, like, it's like falling in love based on like superficial things, right? right. It doesn't last. <laughs> so I always tell people why you shouldn't come work for this company. So that's like the first that letter. Why shouldn't I come to work? <laughs> I'd say, look, you might have heard we provide free food, this or that. Yeah, and you might have that's why I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> for the free food. Uh, yeah, exactly. And you, you'll be shocked at how many people think of those as big value. I know. But I know a lot of people that went to work for Google for that. Exactly. Not just all the perks. Right. Perks, yeah. Dry cleaning, just don't food, all the bus, perks, all, all that, that stuff. But think of deeper what you want to do here, why you want to be here. Exactly. And learn about this company, what we stand for. Because there are areas where you are going to disagree. We have some strong convictions. <laughs> so you may have to, you may disagree. How will you handle the disagreement with the company? Yeah. With me? Yeah. So those are the kind I of love things it. I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do. And then if somebody remains and comes to work for us, it works out great usually, you know? Yeah, I uh, teach my Kellogg students to, uh, you know, focus on their, their purpose. And I said, don't believe any of the diagrams that people show you. It's yeah. a trap. Um, but you should have your job and then you can get purpose other places. But if you find a company, <laughs> Where you, they're like, well, how do you do it, Professor? Yeah. I'm like, I look at three things, fun, money, and impact. And if I can do just two of those at a company or a job yeah. or even a keynote, I'll do, I'll do it. But if you can get all three, yeah. even on one project, right? I'm going to build out you know, Zoho Social. It's like trifecta. You're just happy. Yeah. And you got to go for those fleeting Correct. moments. You can't always be Correct. having such a great sense of purpose. But what I've seen in, in your people here, met hundreds over the yeah. last couple and of and years. I also they, say they are living it. Yeah, I also tell our HR, our HR is not a marketing department. Your job is not to go persuade somebody to join us. Oh, and it Don't is in most HR. companies. Yeah. You're right. That's the. <laughs> there is a separate marketing department. You are not a marketing Take department. Take that, all you HR directors out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sarah, thanks, Thank thanks for joining Thank us. You. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. You've been listening to Shribar Bembu, who is the CEO of Zoho. This is Dean Tobias with the Reboot Chronicles. I want to thank you for joining us today down in McAllen, Texas, live from the Zoho Analyst Day, and we will see you soon.